Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth video in the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to look at the map, slideshow and print screens from Dark Table. The map screen can be accessed by pressing the M button on the keyboard or by selecting map from the other menu in the top right hand corner. This screen shows the photos in the current film roll that have location data embedded in their EXIF files. The location data can be added automatically by your uh, camera if it has that capability or you can add it afterwards yourself if you've uh, recorded a GPX file uh, using your mobile for instance. That can be done in light table by using the geotagging menu. You can apply a GPX track file to the photos and it will add the location data to their EXA file. You can see the map here in the middle. The map data is downloaded from open source uh, map data in the, on the internet. Um, dark uh, table keeps a local cache uh, so you can use it even when you don't have internet but to update the data you have to have an internet connection. You can use the mouse to pan the map using the left mouse button and you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can as well use the navigation buttons on the top left corner to navigate around and to zoom in and out on the map. The bottom left corner you've got the scale and on the bottom right corner you've got the coordinates. You can drag photos directly from the film strip into the map to uh, assign uh, uh, location data to them. The data is added automatically into the metadata of the image when you do that. For instance, I can drag this one to here and this location will be assigned to that photo. If a photo has the incorrect location on it, or if you want to delete the uh, location information from the metadata, you can just drag it from the map back onto the film strip. If you can't see the film strip on the bottom, you press Ctrl F to see it, to uh, enable it. You can use Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y on your keyboard to undo and redo an action. And on the left you've got uh, the familiar panes from light table the image collections which would allow you to choose different film roles the recently used collections and the image information we've discussed all of that in the light table video so feel free to check that one out for more information the top right hand pane you've got the find location menu which allows you to search for a location on the map Note that you need an internet connection for that for this feature to work. So suppose I want to look for Paris. You get all the options that match your search. You click on one, it will zoom on it and it will show you an outline of the area that you looked for. This is handy when you're trying to find out uh, where a location was that you know but you can't find out on the map. The next menu on the right is the map setting and the map settings menu would allow you to choose from different sources on the internet for your data. They all have their advantages and disadvantages and they as well have different modes that you would be able to choose if you wanted. The last one is the tagging menu, which we've discussed as well in details in the light table uh, video. So for more information, please check that one. 
next we'll look talk about the slideshow screen you can either press s on your keyboard or select it like i just did to get into the slides slideshow screen which as you would expect starts a slideshow of the photos in the current film roll notice that the slideshow uh, screen is in full screen mode automatically you can press the space bar to start the automatic uh, uh, slideshow or not See, pressing it again pauses it pressing it another time begins it starts it again you can push the plus and minus button to change the time between photos and you can scroll manually by using either the arrow keys or your left and right buttons on the mouse. The slideshow uh, screen is still in early development mode so it doesn't have a lot of uh, available options yet but it is useful to go just through your uh, images in one go if you're showing them to a client for instance. The P button or selecting it in the top right menu takes you to the print screen. The print screen shows you the photo in the middle with the paper around it. So the paper is in white and the gray area that you see here is the printable area that's not used by the currently by the image. So my printer or at least the printer settings here thinks that I can print on this whole area but not on the white ones on the page and I'm currently using only this part of my page. On the left side you've got the now familiar menus of collect images to, to, go th to scroll through your uh, collection and the image information. You can change the print settings in the, on the right hand in the print setting panel you can choose your printer the media profile and intent which are related to your well, to the color management which we will devote a separate video for as it's a really interesting topic under that you've got the page settings we start with the paper size the orientation and then you've got here the margins you can change each margin individually or you can press the lock button and change them all at the same time then you have the scale information of the image and the alignment which you can change by pressing on those buttons then you have print settings which is where they are related to the color management we will discuss that as already mentioned in a different video and finally the print button which sends the image with this information to your printer. That's it for this time. I hope that you found it uh, entertaining and useful. Uh, next time we'll uh, discuss in detail the preferences that you can change and use in uh, Darktable. So stay tuned. See you then.